success is the is the ability right, to make ordinary people do extraordinary things. And one of the things that we've tried to do at Landmark uh, is make ordinary people like you and I, right, do extraordinary things. And and hopefully we're well on our way to extraordinary. But again, it's a journey, right? I always say to my team, if you're not passionate about business, then you're in the wrong business, right? Um, and the third thing I'd like to say is, is life ba basically when you want to start a business, if there's a message I could give out there. If you want to start a business. It's not about making an income, it's about making an impact. Because if you do make an impact, you will make the income. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as they say, you know, everybody has bright ideas, right? But the ab ability to execute those bright ideas is more important, is, is the, where the value is, is the ability to execute rather than the ideas. If you thought of it, many other people have thought of it, but not many people have executed it. So uh, one has to always try to find a way, you know, to meet the challenges. You know, sometimes in Africa, one of the down things in Africa is we focus too much on the problems. Um, we've got to start focusing on the solutions. We know some of the governments are bad. We know some of the regulations don't, don't favor us. We know that we don't have all the raw materials. We know we don't have all the money. We know we don't have the infrastructure, but how do you get around that? And how do you ensure that you can create something for the benefit of the people? Because if you serve a need, right, you will do well and you'll be successful. The view in here, it's incredible. Yeah, you love it? No, love is understatement. Yeah, do you have any word apart from like a head of love? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is this is um this is God's creation, not mine. So I'm not gonna claim what God did. Yeah. All all we can do is um is is work on it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mr. Paul, how it's are the you? third time meeting you it in is. three days. In three days. There must be something about that. Exactly. Yeah. You know yeah. what? Everyone is telling me my trip in Nigeria won't be complete if I don't speak to Paul. You flatter me. Oh no. I mean, <laughs> why is it everyone is talking about you? I don't know whether they're talking about me or talking about the things. No, so let, let me, I just want to ask you this question. This is from a beautiful lady. Yeah. She said I should ask you, are yes. you married? Very much so. Happily oh, married with two lovely children. Because she adores you, you know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Mr. Paul, yeah, yeah. my name is Wadamaya from Ghana. Yeah. And, and I'm Paul uh, Wanibe, as you know. From, yeah. from Nigeria. From Nigeria. Yeah, but I'm a global citizen. You know, like, you're a global citizen. You know, yeah. I've seen what you've done. I don't even want to introduce mm. yourself. Mm. What is your wish for Nigeria before I start my video? I'll say progress. Uh, and I'll use a simple word as progress. Let every day be better than yesterday. Every new day should be better than yesterday. And your wish for the entire continent of Africa? The entire continent of Africa is relevance. I think um, Africa is relevant because of its people, because of its, its nature, because of the land, but we want global re relevance. We want the African leaders to come together and ensure that Africa plays its part in the world. Mr. Paul, mm. you're one of the people that represents it's possible mm. in Africa. Yeah. Do you know that? Yep. <laughs> you are also one of the people that represent Africans are capable. Well, Walter Rudney said, even the best is not good enough for Africa. And that's true. Even the best is not good enough for Africa because what we can do and what we can achieve in the world on that global platform um, is limitless. I mean, mm. tell me your name and um, where you're from because I know Paul, I don't know the full name. Okay. So if you can tell me your real name, okay. I mean, where you were born and raised and um, right. let, let them know more about you. All right, okay. <laughs> you can all take right. a walk, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, why not? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, my name is Paul Owanibe. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm from Eastern Nigeria, um, a little town called Oweri that's, that's grown up a lot. Mm. Um, and uh, I was born in London. My parents were diplomats, so I was, I was born in London at the time. But um, I did my primary school in London, came over to Nigeria and did my secondary school. So my parents sent me to boarding school in Nigeria at the age of 10, my, my brother and I. My sister was luckier than we were, and she, she sort of stayed. But um, went through Federal Government College, Lagos, okay. Ijanike, and um, it's called, now called Federal Government College, Ijanike. I had a great time there. First year or two was hard, but three, four, five years, made some great friends, great associations, great relationships, and a lot of the people I know today and speak to today in the continent of Africa, and more specifically the country of Nigeria, are people I met in Federal Government College, Lagos. Um, after Federal Government College, Lagos, I got a bit of the Nigeria spirit. The what Africa, is that? Africa spirit. Africa yeah, spirit. Yeah, and I wanted to stay here, not go back to cold London. So. Um, I took the JAM exams, unfortunately passed. I did an architecture degree at the University of Nigeria, made another great set of friends, enjoyed myself. You know, I call it the best university in Nigeria. Sorry to your viewers who went to other universities, <laughs> but, um, but it, it, it really was a quality university with quality relationships. And I think I stand here today, having attempted to do the things that we've attempted to do 
because of that background of Federal Government College Lagos and University of Nigeria. Mm. After the University of Nigeria, I, I went back to the UK, um, worked in architectural practice, did a construction management, master's in construction management Ooh, and project management. You a certificate degree. from Nigeria? Yes, I did my, my BSc in Nigeria and I did a master's in architecture and environmental design in Nigeria as well. I went back to the UK, worked in an architectural practice, did a master's in project management and construction management, did an MBA um, in London Business School and um, decided to start working. I then realized I didn't really want to be an architect, but I liked buildings and I liked the property environment. So I focused on the business end of property right. rather than the drawing end of property. Um, I worked with a property development company, I worked with Bovis, which was a large property development and construction company. Then I went to work with Beacon Development, which was a housing development company across the UK. You're just working with them? You never had your own project? You're just working with people? Uh, yes, I was working with them. I was working under that platform. And, um, but you know, as I, I was learning because I traveled a lot. And then I went to work with Regis. And then when I went to work with Regis, which is um, the global leaders in service offices, mm. um, and I went to work with them in their property and logistics team. At the time, they were, it was almost the inaugural Regis platform. So there were very few of us at the time. And I worked with this entrepreneur, a special man called Mark Dixon. Um, he's put, he put $200,000 into this company and floated it for $1.4 billion eight years later. Whoa. We watched that growth. In the time there, I traveled to 67 countries. We built. 269 office complexes and he just changed the way people worked and um and that's where i learned how to persevere how to be courageous how to climb mountains and go down valleys and how not to complain because you know we're just fortunate in life when you have something to do mm. and um so that was interesting that's the point in time i said i'm going to start my own business which year was this gosh this was in 1997 that's when you started your own business. Yes, I was a young man then, but I'd, I traveled a lot. I, I had grown old by hard work. I was sleeping two, three hours a day, you know. So, you know, it sounds interesting, but even, you know, I, to I told you I did my master's and my MBA and stuff. I yeah. did that while working, you know, yeah. and I even worked in the post office to make things up. You know, so, we, you know, we, we, we was hard. You know, this hustle is real. <laughs> what were you doing when you started your own project? Landmark, this. So I started in the UK, yes. Um, and in, I started in London. And it was it was designed to service um, office businesses. So I I I, um, I pursued the companies that were very small that wanted a big image. So I said to myself, I want to be in the best building on the best street in the best area of a city. So we did that in London. It grew oh, okay. it grew fairly successfully. Then I opened in in Paris, in Prague, in Madrid, in Frankfurt, and then went to New York. Opened up in New York. Had a bloody nose in New York. The American market is tough, but it was it was fine all the same. But I went into one of the Twin Towers and um, that came, came to an end, unfortunately, when, when the Twin Towers was, was wow. blown up. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So which means Landmark is not just Lagos? No, no, this is, this is the la later end of Landmark. I think a lot of people don't know this. That's what yeah. I, I say, Landmark, Landmark Africa. I'm like, why Landmark Africa? Which means you have Landmark Madrid, yeah. Landmark... Yes, I, no, I had. You so had? I, I, it's no longer in existence? No, I'll tell you a story. In 2003, wow. I decided to a very close friend of mine visited um, Miss visited me in the UK mm -hmm. and were, you know came to work with me while his family were on holiday and um, at the point he said you know this thing you're doing here this hard sweat you should bring it to Nigeria and I said look I don't really want a Nigeria business I used to come on holidays to Nigeria and it was still sort of trying to grow up the country and I said but I would like an Africa business because you know I saw myself as African um, so in 2003 we teamed up together um, he worked in a private equity organization or, or ran a private equity organization and teamed up together with a couple of other people and decided to create Landmark Africa. So we said we wanted the four corners of Africa. So we opened an office in Johannesburg in the south, mm. in Nairobi in the east, and in Lagos in the west. And um, that's how Landmark Africa was formed. No, North Africa. No, we tried in several times. We, we, we tried in, in Cairo, in Egypt. Um, we had hard issues. We tried in Libya. And then you know what happened in Libya? The war mm. broke out. Um, we did a big job there for, um, for Siemens and GE and Nokia, Nokia Siemens Networks at the time and yeah. GE, but it didn't work out, the war came and stuff. But, um, so we focused in West, East and South, and uh, we started in filling. We, we, we did 14 different buildings in, in that arena. Step by that. So you, you get a real bird's eye view. This is the entire landmark. That's one side of it, the other side is on that side. Oh, on the side too? Yes, so, so we walk over here. So you can sort of oh see. So from that wall to that wall. Let me understand, yeah? You bought 
the land, including the beach? Yes, that was, um, gosh. So it's a private Th beach? 13 years ago, it's a private beach, yes. L let me know, if somebody's hearing Landmark for the first time, what is Landmark all about? Well, gosh, Landmark is many things, but b bottom line is Landmark is a business leisure lifestyle business, right? So, um, so we call ourselves a destination. So when you think of places like maybe Canary Wharf, Disney World, Melrose Arch, Victoria and Albert's Embankment in, in, in Cape Town, um, our job is to bring people here. So most, most businesses, there, what they use to operate is currency. Our currency is footfall. So the number of people who come here determine how well we and how successful we are. So we make them come here, we make them stay here. So the longer they stay here and the more they spend here and the more they enjoy themselves and tell everybody else to come, then oh. that's success for us. I mean, where do they live when they come in here? Where do Where they do you live? Want, to, want them to live? Because I thought it's just a beach. No, not at all. Landmark is, <laughs> so Landmark is a business leisure lifestyle destination. As I said, we have corporate clients from PwC, Novartis, Universal Studios, Sony, AC Nielsen, Bosch, Microsoft were here once, GE were here with us, um, Johnson, Johnson & Johnson, CNN, CNN are here. Um, so, so we have quite a few things. Um, and talking from left to right, so there's a cinema there, there's an event center. We have some of the world's best restaurants, Shiro, The Hard Rock, The Spur, 355. The popular KFC is here as well. Um, we have offices in the retail shop, Retail Boulevard. We have probably the number one convention um, center in, in Lagos. Um, we're also home to the Scholarship Academy, um, which is called the Nigerian University of Technology and Management on the top floor in that building, 65 scholarship students. In the building we're standing on the roof on, um, it's a mixed-use building, there are shops and restaurants downstairs, there are six floors of offices, there's a hotel, and you've stayed in the hotel, you tell me about it. <laughs> and and there are residential apartments, <laughs> and there are residential apartments, and we're, we're in the penthouse of one of them. Yes, And, and of course there's the beach. The beach is, is, the, is the leisure and lifestyle part of, of who we are, um, but 90% of landmark it's more, it's more the business end mm. of it, yes. So, so. Amazing, man. But, I mean, I've been to the beach and you have to pay before you get in there. Well, technically. There's something yes. that I don't understand. Online is 2000 yeah. but at the gate is 3000 Why? Yeah. Because the idea is we don't really want people coming here without paying. So it's meant to be a private member's beach. So we're trying to encourage people to become members anyway, right? It's 50,000 Naira a year to be a member. So this is not about money, but it's just about the, the people who come and making sure when they come, they enjoy themselves and, um, and have a very easy access arrangement. So we try to discourage money on the beach. Mm. So we're creating a cashless society here, which is why, um, you know, we've had issues. But, so before, for about three or four months, we had only um, online payments. But people, um, you know, they came over and couldn't do online or hadn't done online and, didn't, and wanted to pay cash. Um, but we don't accept cash, we allow credit card payments um, and on the beach as well, in all the vendor outlets. We have 59 different businesses within Landmark. We employ 3,000 different people um, and there are probably another 8,000 people employed by, uh, well, indirect employment as, as, as they say. But directly from my Landmark head office staff, there are 80 of us. Um, well, I, I understand we're 90 now. <laughs> well, there are 3,000 people that work within this ecosystem. So, one hopes that we're not only just generating employment, um, but we're also generating some excitement in the, in the, in the state. How did you discover this land? Well, from the air. How? From the air. So, <laughs> so I'd been coming to Lagos quite often, yeah. and I, I understood, because I lived in Ikoi when I was little, and um, I understood Victoria Island, and I saw the Lekki Corridor growing, and I kept on thinking, there must be something in between Lekki and, and Victoria Island. Um, so we rented a helicopter, and I oh, flew wow. over and I, looked, I was looking for a place where I could create a destination, you know, a mixed-use destination. And I wanted it by the waterside. And one of the things that um, stunned me most about Nigeria is that, you know, you have this beautiful scenery, you have all this water, you have all this great land, but there's very little, very few developments on the water, right? And True. you see most of the developments on the water, they back the water, they build a fence. Right? I don't think it's just Nigeria, it's an African thing. It, maybe it's an African thing, you're right, you're, you're <laughs> right, you're right. So, so um, I saw this from the air and I thought, you know what, that piece of land there, at the time it was called Morocco, right? And it was, okay. it was swamp land, there was hardly any, there was nothing here. We had to build the road when we, when we bought this then land. Then they should have given you this land for free. <laughs> Life because they're here to develop it. <laughs> Life doesn't work like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you mean there was nothing here? Nothing, absolutely nothing. It was marshland, there was nothing here, there were no roads, you couldn't, you couldn't, there was nothing here. Nothing, no buildings, nothing. 
nothing. It was marshland. It was so wasteland. You, you did everything by yourself. Yes, we did everything. So we we was the land expensive. Very, very. Ah, but very, there was nothing very. here, and you want to help. So definitely. But uh, that's the way. That's the way life is. We're you know? talking. But you, I'm sure you've heard the Las Vegas story. Uh, no. Oh, you haven't heard the Las Vegas no. story. <laughs> 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 when when the guy found the place and um, a strip of land a mile long and a mile wide and yeah. he he said to the um, the the uh, politicians that he wanted to create you know at the time it was dream prohibition in America when everything was banned and he said I want to create a destination where we can unban everything here you know the gambling the prostitution the drinking and stuff so and then um, he said look this would be a success story so the mafia sponsored him and then they waited three to five years and um, it never happened uh, and um, so they killed him <laughs> right but you know las vegas today is the number one destination, destination on earth on planet earth um, for many reasons um, now we're, we're our model is not vegas our model is sort of more business legend lifestyle so we want we found out in africa all, when you think of all the problems in Africa and in Nigeria specifically, in Lagos locally, right? It's traffic, it's crime, it's infrastructure deficits so, and service issues. So how do you bring everything in one place and put in the infrastructure, remove the traffic, create a sane environment and make sure that people can come and whether they want to be on the beach, work in an office, watch a movie, eat in a restaurant, stay in a hotel, um, you know, and do that with, with, with peace and leisure. And that, that's the very idea behind what we're trying to do here. Is it worth it establishing this in Lagos? I mean, it, it is. I mean, is it worth it is a, is a, is a tough uh, question. In, is it, it depends yeah, on what perspective. Glance, I mean, like, is, is it profitable? I mean, I, I, have it, you been able to get your money back? I mean, your investment? No, no well, you know, real or, estate. Or is, it's a long term investment. It's a long term investment. Real estate, you know, we're not traders here. <laughs> so, real estate is a long term business. And, and unfortunately, the challenges in this part of the world are a lot more significant than other, other places, especially when it comes to real estate. So in the, if you look at the value chain of real estate from the acquisition of the land to the infrastructure to all the permits and licenses you require, then the building you need, then the servicing of that building and the resources and the staff. So there's a long chain. And remember, there's finance in between. So exactly. it's, it's tough. I really don't like asking people how much their property worth, but the way you are talking to me, I feel like asking you, how much do you think this whole project will cost? I mean, now it's 50% down. After 100 percent? Well, I don't know. We, we have spent um, close to, I would say, about between 80 and 90 million dollars so far um, where we are, right? Um, um, in terms of because of property appreciation and stuff, obviously, it may be worth a little bit more. Sometimes it goes down because the dollar crashes. <laughs> Sometimes it goes up because the Naira strengthens. But, but w I can tell you what we spent. I can't, I, you know, we don't know how much it's worth. And it doesn't really matter. Exactly. It doesn't really <laughs> it's like matter, living in I a think... house and you say, my house is worth X, but you're still living in it. So it's not exactly. really worth anything. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You've been in Nigeria for how many years now? Since so I've been, so um, I've been in Nigeria. I, I mean, I, I, I travel back and forth. And if my wife is watching this, I live in London, right? <laughs> but I work in Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you need to get yourself a private jet. Uh, well, you know, this business doesn't make that kind of money. <laughs> you know, but hopefully yeah. when we retire, yeah. um, someone will lend me theirs. But um, um, yeah, so I've been in and out of Nigeria since 2003. I've been in Nigeria almost every month since 2003. And um, now I spend considerably much more time in Nigeria than anywhere else. But, but uh, wow. yeah, yeah. Do you think, do you ever regret? investing in Nigeria? No, of course not. You know, I mean, this is, this is my country. Um, do I... Like, do because I, these are questions that people are asking. Like, oh, I mean, living in the UK, you have everything. Why would you want to waste so much money to invest in the motherland? I mean, there are a lot of Africans who have a lot of money out there, but they don't even think about Africa when they talk about investment. That's what I'm asking you. Do you ever well, regret investing in Nigeria? No, definitely not. not. I don't even have to think about the answer to that question. Absolutely not. We've had hard times. We've had difficult times. We've had times when I thought, gosh, I wish... I wish I'd done it in a different way, right? <laughs> but I, you can't regret re investing. You know, it's like you know, it's like regretting having a child. You can't. No matter when the child cries and when the child is stubborn, you know, you work with it. You don't. You don't, you don't you regret it. You have done it, and I would say congratulations because you've made it. You know, because a I lot don't, of I don't know about no, 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 that. No, no, it's a journey. No, 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 no,
don't leave Nigeria without talking to Paul. <laughs> Paul, a lot uh, of Africans uh, watching us right now. Mm. I mean, if you have any message for them to invest in the motherland, mm. what would that message be? Well, my, my big message will be belief. You will hear the problems, you will hear of the issues, but you know, the thing about Africa and Nigeria specifically, there's so much to be done and everything to be done is an opportunity. And people, you know, you just said, oh, you, you know, you, you live in the UK where there's everything and that's not true. It's not everything. I tell you something, when I get to the UK, if my family were not there, I would do a U-turn in a day, right? The only what? reason I spend longer, yes, it's cold, it's miserable, the people don't like you, even though the way they pretend to half of the time. I mean, these countries are getting a lot better and they're more acceptable, right? Um, but they're not without their own problems. They're just a very different set of problems. Um, so coming to Nigeria where you have an identity, you're looking people in the eye, you're actually helping people and um, you're changing people's lives and you're communicating with people in a very different way than you can in the UK, by the way. Um, so, you know, there are challenges in their hearts. So what I, what I would say is my biggest advice would be if you're coming to a place like this to invest, right, you can get exponential returns if you focus on excellence. Um, you have challenges, climb those challenges, yeah, make, you know, all the easy things have been done, right? So just remember, everything's going to be difficult, right? <laughs> and if you have a mindset that everything's going to be difficult, then you'll eventually get there because not everybody thinks of what you're doing as a service, right? Some people think of it as a service to yourself, mm. right? Um, so not everybody looks at it as a greater good. And, you know, you just have to make enough friends and tell your story enough. Paul, well, I mean, you have a lot of young Africans that want to be like you. Yeah, including me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you flatter me again. <laughs> you flatter me again. I... Paul, I just want to know, yeah, mm. what are you doing right now? I call this, the question I want to ask you, it's like transfer of knowledge. Mm. What are you doing right now to empower the people around you? And you need to empower some of us, you know. I mean, in Nigeria, they call it ginger. You need to ginger <laughs> some of us. So now, yeah, well, what are you doing at this very moment to ginger the people around you? Well, you're looking at me from afar. Imagine my team, my, all my colleagues in Landmark, they look at me from close by, and I talk to them every day. And, and um, some of them, I'm sure, are tired of listening to me. But, uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, we all have experiences in the world, and I learn from people. Mm. I learn from 20-year-old people that work yeah. at Landmark, right? And, and hopefully they learn a little bit from me. But I think what we have done um, here um, so far, right, has been monumental considering the challenges we've had. Um, the people, some of the sweat and blood and tears, just the perseverance, the hard work and the courage shown by the team to do some of these things. You know, most of the, the team at Landmark really hadn't been to an environment like this. And, and some of them, they're all professionals, all went to university and stuff, but some of them just haven't had, haven't seen this sort of challenge. So you know what I did three years ago? What I took do? the entire company to Dubai. Right? And we spent, four, I think, four or five days on a five-star resort in Dubai because I wanted them to see exactly what it was we were trying to create here. And it was, it was the most expensive investment I've, I've made. It cost more than some of these buildings here. But you know what? It was the, it was the most rewarding because it did many things. First of all, I had to get most of them passports. Some, those that had passports, we had to get visas. We had to get a plane to carry everybody and make, the, make sure they came back, right? Um, but you know, we had a good time and it really opened everybody's eyes, including mine, right? And people understood what quality meant. You can't really achieve something unless people actually see what it is you're trying to achieve because the vision is sort of 10, 15 years from where you are today, right? Um, so just explaining that. So we, you know, we have a collection of executives in Landmark that spend so much energy trying to encourage and teach and share wisdom and knowledge. Um, and I've learned a lot. I've learned so much in the last 17 years here and I'm, I'm grateful for that. You have a chance to change one thing in the motherland, what will that be? Oh, government, private sector and public sector. What I, I want to say, <laughs> oh, you want to add more? I want to add more I'll because add more, private add sector more. and public sector. And what uh -huh. I mean by that is, you know, if there's one thing I could change in Nigeria, it would be the handshake between the government and the private sector. They're not shaking hands right no, now? No, 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 they're not shaking hands. So the private sector don't respect the government as much as they should, and the government don't respect the private sector as much as they should. Someone told me that the government actually frustrates private sectors. <laughs> Is it, no, well, the government, some people in the government sometimes frustrate the private sector. That's, there's no doubt about that. And I don't think I'll be breaking any oath by saying <laughs> that. Uh, and some people in the private sector frustrate um, good government officials as well in, in their own way. But what, what, this, what this country needs is for the private sector to recognize the role of the government mm. and for the government to recognize the role of the private sector because the private sector can do things in a much more efficient and um, an excellent way. Right? And the government can help provide the platform for that excellence. And if, if the two came together and said, you know what, we're now going to do things for the greater good, you know, um, 
I remember sitting down with a government official once and I, and I said, I said, you know what? We have many problems in Nigeria, right? And there are many solutions. And if you can't be part of the solution, yes, just please don't be part of the problem, right? Because we can find the solutions if, you, if, you don't, if you're not part of the problem. And I think if I were in the government, I'll be saying the same thing to the private sector. I'll say the same, same thing and make sure the private sector weighs into, right, with, with its own CSR, with its own community, pay your taxes, you know, do the things, you know, be a, a proper citizen, right, and contribute to the land. You know, you said something that I'm so happy. You said be part of the solution, yeah. don't be part of the problem. Yeah. If you're telling Nigerians to be part of Nigeria's solution, what would that message be? Um, whew, I would say always do what you think is right. Um, I think if you do what you think is right, if you pursue excellence without any restraint, yes, um, if you're honest, if you're hardworking, if you're courageous, and you shine a light where you think something is wrong, um, I think generally, bit by bit, because I'm a property guy, I'll say brick by brick, we will change this country and we'll change it for the good. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. The, ple the pleasure is absolutely mine.